Good morning, everybody. I am here to share my thoughts on Nehemiah chapter 4 in three minutes. And if you doubt me, I've even got a timer, which I'm going to start now. Three, two, one, go. So, in Nehemiah chapter 4, there are two guys called Sambala and Tobiah, and they are horrible to Nehemiah. They're constantly saying stuff like, Pff, Nehemiah thinks he can rebuild Jerusalem. What a loser. Look what he's done so far. It is rubbish. He is never going to be able to succeed. And the reason why I think this is more than just a really old story is that it is relevant for us today because I bet that someone has once said similar things to you. Now, they've probably never criticised your ability to rebuild an ancient city, but what they might have done, highly likely I think, is criticise you or belittle you or make fun of you for something that you care deeply about or are really passionate about. That has certainly happened to me. But... More importantly, I think the voices that cut me down the most, the voices that belittle me or accuse me or mock me, often don't come from other people at all. Most often, I think they come from within me. And I'm willing to bet that this is the same for you too. I'm willing to bet that the voices which most often make you doubt yourself or feel bad about yourself are voices which seem to come from inside your own head. Well, I'm here to say this morning that just because these voices seem to come from within us, doesn't mean that they are actually our voices and we don't have to just sit there and listen to them and accept them as true. In fact, I think in this passage, Nehemiah teaches us that there are three things that we can do instead. In verse 9, he says this. He says, we prayed to our God and set a guard against them day and night. So, Nehemiah does three things. He has an enemy and he knows that he can't fight them alone. So the first thing he does is he gathers some friends together. He says, we prayed. The second thing he does is he does what he can do. He knows that if they attack, they are going to be vulnerable. So he sets up soldiers to guard the city. And the third thing he does, most importantly, is he knows that he can't defeat this enemy on his own. They need God's help. And so they pray. Nehemiah does everything he can do, but he also prays for God's help to do everything he can't do as well. Those are the three things, just 50 seconds left. So what should we do when we're faced with our own enemies, when voices tell us that we're no good and we should give up? Well, we should learn from Nehemiah for the three things. Firstly, we should gather some friends around us. None of us has to fight alone and we can reach out to people and gather them together. The second thing we can do is we can do what we are able to do, and that is that we're able to identify those voices as enemy voices and their lies, and we can remind ourselves of the truth of what God says in his word, that we are precious, we are loved, and we do have a future and a hope in him. And thirdly, we can pray. We can pray for God to help us do all the things that we cannot do on our own. And he will comfort us and strengthen us and fight for us, just like he did with Nehemiah. So there we go. Those are my three thoughts on Nehemiah chapter four in under three minutes. And I'd encourage you, if you are feeling alone, do reach out. We're always here to help.